so next is what is central force and the motion under central forces <coughs> a force is a force acts on a particle in such a way that it is always directed towards or away from a fixed point and its magnitude depends only upon the distance which is r from the from that point then the force is called a central force that is <coughs> the def this is the definition of central forces that is a force which is acting towards or away from a fixed point towards or away from a fixed point uh, is known as central force and its magnitude depends only on this distance from this fixed point and such a force is known as uh, central force for example gravitational force which is always acting towards or away from the earth so it is an example of central force okay so that kind of uh, forces are known as central forces which is represented by f which is a function of r that is this r is the distance uh, from which it or towards which it acts <coughs> and r is the unit vector representing the direction of that fixed point so the magnitude of this unit vector can be represented as r vector by mode value of r this is f of r f of r is any function of distance so f of r can be any function um, which is a function of that distance if f of r is less than 0 the force is attractive the f of r less than 0 means this is a negative quantity so if it is negative then the force will be attractive <coughs> if f of r is greater than zero that is positive this is, the force will be repulsive you know uh, when we the usual convention is uh, we are using negative sign for attractive forces and positive sign for <coughs> repulsive forces that's why we are taking the acceleration due to gravity uh, towards earth as towards earth as minus g and away from earth as uh, plus g if a particle is moving under the influence of a central force f is equal to f of r r vector by mode value of r mode value of r is simply written as r so that the torque acting on it is given by torque T is equal to dj by dt which is nothing but r cos f here f is f of r into vector r by mod r here here vector product of same vectors r cross r appears so the result will be zero that means dj by dt is zero which implies j is constant that is angular momentum about the origin is constant this when a particle moves under the action of central force its angular momentum j is a constant that's what is explicit from this that is when external torque uh, so, sorry when a particle is moving under central force its angular momentum remains constant or conserved <coughs> In magnitude and direction <coughs> but j is equal to r cross p um, since j is equal to r cross p where p is linear momentum if you are taking dot product with r of this equation on both side you will get r dot j on left side and r dot r cross p on left side this will give you zero okay because this quantity is zero according to the vector product rule so r is always perpendicular to the constant vector j so this means r is uh, r dot j is equal to zero means r is perpendicular to j since r dot j is r cos theta and the other that quantity will be zero when theta is 90 degree because cos theta will have zero value when theta is equal to 90 degree which means r is always perpendicular to the constant vector j that is the motion takes place in a plane for central forces that is
so this is about central force and motion under central force okay so 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 next is aerial velocity <clears throat> this is a part of this central force motion so let o be the center of force when the vector r changes to r plus delta r so this is the center and a particle is moving along this path so this is its initial point which is represented by the vector r and it is moving this direction suppose uh, so after a uh, few time it reaches here which is r plus delta r by position so the vector area delta s swept by the radius vector in this time can be represented as So the vector area swept by this vector uh, can be represented as delta S is equal to half R cross delta R which is by the definition of the area of a triangle. So we will get delta S is equal to half R cross delta R. This area is swept in delta T time. Therefore, dividing both sides of this equation by delta t and taking limit as delta t tends to 0. So, if you are differentiating with respect to de delta t uh, and the limit delta t tends to 0. So, <coughs> delta s by delta t in the limit delta t tends to 0. Delta t tends to 0 means ds by dt. So, ds by dt will give you half r cross delta r by delta t so which is delta r by delta t in the limit delta t tends to 0 which is nothing but again dr by dt dr by dt is v so we will get ds by dt as half r cross v which is equal to j by 2m this is because r cross uh, mv is j which can be written as m into r cross v so r cross v is nothing but j by m so r cross v can be written as j by m so uh, a 2 is already here so this is j by 2m this expression gives the aerial velocity of the particle moving under central force so ds so ds is the uh, a elemental area swept out by the particle when it is moving along this path so ds by dt will give you the velocity uh, aerial velocity uh, under this force central force okay so from this above equation um, but j is constant for a particle moving under central force which we have already seen so from the above equation this quantity is a constant which means the aerial velocity remains constant. So this is aerial velocity and this quantity is constant since j is constant under the central force that means the aerial velocity remains constant when the particle moves in the influence of a central force. That's what's the conclusion. So the aerial velocity of a particle under, under central force remains constant constant okay now examples for angular momentum so uh, we will discuss two cases here planetary or satellite motion and the motion of a circus acrobat first we will discuss planetary or satellite motion the planets are move in elliptical orbits about the sun as one of its fo focus or oh, force uh, to say it more correctly 
the focus of the ellipse should be taken as the center of mass of the sun and the planet so uh, what is the uh, solar system uh, a sun is at the center and the planets are moving around uh, around the sun in elliptical path so Uh, so the center of uh, center of this elliptical path will be or center of mass of the elliptical path will be a center of mass of this system um, system constituting sun and this planets as the sun is much heavier than the planets the center of mass is near to the center of the sun uh, since uh, compared to other planets moving around the sun the sun, um, mass of the sun is heavier than these planets so the center of mass is nearly close to the sun that's why we are saying that the planets move in elliptical orbits about the sun as its focus so the gravitational force on the planet is directed towards the center of the sun in other words this force is a central force so the gravitational force is acting towards the Uh, sun that's why the planets are revolving al uh, along the orbit around the sun and this is a central force consequently the angular momentum of the planets will be constant and so the orbit of motion will be a plane orbit of motion will be a, a plane like this just as we explain uh, when we are more uh, this this when we were described about the motion under central force that is uh, there we there will have a center and the uh, particles around it that is if it if it is a case of solar system sun will be the center and the planets will be moving along this path which will be a plane okay for planetary motion <clears throat> the constant cj means that the aerial velocity ds by dt j by 2m is constant which have seen just before this is the rate of sweeping out of the area by a radial vector from sun to the planet is a constant so we have uh, the uh, we have seen that the aerial velocity remains constant when it is moving under a central force so if this is a solar system and this is a sun and if it is one of the planet which is moving around this sun and this is its path so the aerial velocity uh, is aerial velocity of this planet set out by uh, will be a constant that is a radial vector forming so the rate of sweeping out of the area by the radial vector from by the planet is a constant this is known as kepler's second law of planetary motion similarly artificial satellites move in elliptical orbits around the earth and the angular momentum is conserved so similarly uh, artificial satellites are moving in elliptical orbits around the sun and so it's uh, it's moving under the central force and its angular momentum is conserved in case of artificial satellite satellites comes close to the earth its speed decreases due to the earth's atmosphere its angular momentum decreases so a in the case of satellites which are coming close to the earth due to the atmosphere's effect the uh, speed of the satellite decreases uh, and its angular momentum also decreases but the angular momentum of the earth increases in this process and hence the total angular momentum of the system remains constant but the earth's angular momentum increases so the total angular momentum of the system constituting this earth and the satellite system remains constant so in a planetary motion for the conservation of angular momentum which is r cross mv which is r cross mv the planet must move faster at the point of closest approach to the sun than at the farthest point the reason lies in the fact that this point 
these points of angular momentum is mvr <clears throat> because at this position r is perpendicular to v and for its cons consistency the shorter r is associated with larger v if r1 r2 are the distances of closest and the farthest points of the planet respectively and v1 v2 are the corresponding velocities then m1 v1 r1 is equal to m2 v2 r2 which means v1 r1 is equal to v2 r2 so what is saying here is so in planetary motion um, for the conservation of angular momentum uh, the planet must move faster at the point of closed approach to the sun so uh, when it is coming uh, so since it is in a elliptical path the sun of um, i will draw it here since this is moving in elliptical path the sun will be in uh, sun will be the focus uh, which may which may not be in the exact center so this is the point of clock um, suppose the planet is moving moving along this path so this is the point of closest approach and this is the point of farthest approach that is this is the point where it is very far from this sun and when when this is moving and reaching this point this will be the closest approach to this sun so in order to conserve the angular momentum uh, when it is reaching this um, uh, so, uh, so the definition of momentum is angular momentum is mvr so when it is reaching this point the r is very short compared to this r is short means the v should be very large in order to remain this angular momentum a constant so in this point here r is large so velocity should be small so that's what we are explained explained here so uh, when r is short so at the point of distance closest approach the velocity is large so that uh, the angular momentum remains constant similarly the point of farthest approach here r is large so the velocity should be small so that the velocity remains constant uh, sorry angular momentum remains constant so we'll, we can write m1 v1 r1 is equal to m2 v2 r2 and so sorry here there is no m1 and v, m2 because the mass is same since the same we are talking about the same planet so m can cancel out so we'll get v1 r1 is equal to v2 r2 okay so this is about the conservation of angular momentum in the case of planetary motion of satellite or planetary motion of satellite motion now we'll discuss about the motion of circus acrobat <coughs> so in the case of <coughs> similarly <coughs> a circus acrobat standing on a, a turntable uses this principle of conservation of angular momentum so, uh, the turntable is free to rotate so uh, you might have seen in circus the circus acrobats um, performance so the person who are performing um, will be standing on a turning table let the mass let the mass sorry let the man stand with his hands stretched and let the table be set into rotation slowly so imagine the person who is standing on the table is standing with the, with its with his arms stretched to both to both sides and the table is turned slowly or rot, uh, starts to rotate slowly now if he drop his hands to his sides he will start rotating faster this is explained in the for following manner when the mass sorry when the man when the man holds his hands close to his body so initially he was standing with his hands stretched on the table so when he when he dropped down his hands to his sides to his sides of his body 
the distance of distribution of mass from the axis of rotation axis of rotation is its center of its body rotation decreases so the moment of inertia of the system decreases since l is equal to i omega where i is the moment of inertia of the system about the axis of rotation about the axis of rotation and omega is the angular velocity i decreases omega increases so what happens is when he is uh, and he is dropping down his uh, hands to his body to his body his uh, the center of sorry the distribution of mass from the axis of rotation decre decreases so the moment of inertia decreases on the moment of inertia is i which is m into r square so it will decreases when r decreases and since angular momentum is i omega where i is the moment of inertia this the system about the axis of rotation and omega the angular velocity of rotation so as i decreases when he put down his hands close to his body omega increases that is angular velocity increases so he turns more speedily when he when he put his hands close to his body similarly a diver or a skater also uses the same principle for conservation of angular momentum so uh, this is how a circus acrobat is using the principle of conservation of angular momentum for their performance okay